Okay, so you've got three things to tell you about what you can do with a definite article that you don't already know. <laughs> and they're cool things. Um, we, we, don't, we can do some of these things in English. The first one is something that we do do in English. It's, it's the phenomenon where you take an article and you stick it in front of an adjective. So, so uh, back in the 80s, there were these uh, spaghetti, so we called them spaghetti westerns, like the good, the bad, and the ugly, mm -hmm. right? That's, you take an adjective, good, and you stick a noun, an article in front of it, becomes a noun. Okay, in Greek you can do that too, because Greek is an Indo-European language. But Greek has the ad additional f feature, that English does not have, of having grammatical gender. Okay, um, so we can do things that English can't do. It can make the article different genders and different numbers. So you can say, he agathe, as in our first example, um, and it means the good uh, female person, okay? <laughs> it may be some good female thing that you've mentioned in the context, but by itself, it means a good, a good, uh, a good feminine, a good woman, okay? That's where the name Agatha comes from. Anyhow, if you make it neuter and plural, it's ta agatha. That means the collection of good things. In Greek, actually, that usually means goodness. It's a way of talking about uh, um, a, an abstraction, which is goodness in a concrete way. So all the things that are good, in a sense, give you the concept of what actual, actual, the essence of goodness is. So you can say, you can do it in the singular or the plural. plural Plato prefers the plural more. You can say ta agathon, that means goodness, that which is good. But you can also do it in the plural, which is, I think, cooler. And then you can do, uh, uh, have a masculine uh, plural, like hoi kakoi, um, the bad, the bad men, okay? There are plenty of them in Greek culture. We were talking about the good and the bad um, today. All right, um, here's the second thing that you can do with, with uh, our, the definite article. You can make nouns not just out of adjectives, but out of prepositional phrases, adverbs, and nouns in the genitive case. These are things that we don't do, okay? So um, you can just, take, if you have, as in our first example, ente hora, which is the prepositional phrase that by itself means in the land, if you stick an article front of it, in front of it, say a feminine one, okay, and we're giving you examples in the nominative case because that's the default case, but obviously these can be in different cases. They're just like any noun, okay? So that, that'll mean the women in the land, okay, as a chunk, right? Because you've, you've made it, it's the attributive use of the article, right? Mm -hmm. You've glued them all together. So it's the women in the land, okay? That's, that's, you can do it with any prepositional phrase you want. Stick an article in front of it, uh, of any gender you want, and so forth. You can do it with adverbs. So we learn, uh, have we learned these? I think we have. The adverb nun, mm -hmm. which means now, and the adverb tata, which means then. So if you say hi nun, okay, the women, it means the women nowadays. Or hi tata, the women back then. Here's another thing that we can do. Uh, we can you can do this with particles, so you can say we should write this down. Okay. Let's see, you can say, hoi men. Dot dot dot. And hoi de. Okay. Dot dot dot, and that will mean the some people and other people. Okay, the Greek uses the masculine gender when it's not clear what gender something is, okay? So it's non-gender specific as well as it can be masculine. So hoi men is some, hoi de is, is others. You can do it with a with the singular. You can say hey men and hey de. One woman says and the other woman says, right? Um, and so forth. So it's a way of using the particles to make nouns out of, out of uh, all right, so here's the, uh, the last thing, is how you make a noun uh, out of the article plus the genitive of another noun. So ta is neuter plural of the definite article, the things. It doesn't have to be neuter plural. Our examples are neuter plural, but it could be um, um, other, other things. But ta, which is neuter plural, the things, uh, we don't know what. But then you put the genitive of the word demos, ta tu demu, it means the things that belong to the demos because the genitive 
designates possession, okay? The things having to do with or associated with the demos or connected to the demos. In a certain sense, that's what the genitive does. It means, it means something's connected with something else in the most abstract way. So tatu demi means the things that belong to the people, the people's stuff. Or you could do tatu polembu, where polembu is the genitive of the word for war. And it means the things that have to do with war, matters of war. Okay, So you can see there's a very flexible way of uh, dealing with uh, concepts in this language by using the article and using effectively its attributive position mm -hmm. to take uh, prepositional phrases, adverbs, and the genitives, other nouns, and make nouns out of them. We got one more, okay? And that is that you, how you make a gerund in Greek. Let's first talk about what a gerund is, since we, um, we assume nothing, okay? Uh, here's, there's the def definition of a gerund. It's a noun derived from a verb. Key, key thing that it's a noun. So in English, um, gerunds end in ing. So the gerund derived from the verb eat is eating. But there are two eatings in English. <coughs> One is a gerund, as in the sentence, eating makes me happy. That's a noun. That's the subject of the sentence, right? But it's not the other eating, which is an adjective, as in the man eating the fish. Uh, eating the fish is an adjectival phrase. That's actually a participle, okay? Um, that's modifying the man, right? And it's not a noun, all right? So we're talking about how to make these nouns derive from verbs, not the participles. So the rule is given there. You, you start with the neuter singular of the definite article, ta, to, tu, rather, to, and ta, okay? Those are the forms of it. And to it, you add an infinitive, all right? And let's show you some examples of this. If you take ta and you stick it in front of um, uh, luain or lucai, we can do lucai, um, it means releasing or destroying as in the, no the noun, okay? Um, if you... And you can inflect that, right? It can be uh, in any case, any of the four cases, and, and so forth. You can say to lose side for the, if you have a preposition that means for the sake of, you can have it for the sake of releasing, okay? And you put it in the genitive, for example. Um, you can do it with uh, um, passive infinitives as well as active ones. So. The passive infinitive of Luo is, uh, of, the, of the aorist of Luo is ta lu thenai, okay? That's going to mean being released, okay? A noun, as in uh, being released from prison was uh, a joy, okay? So we can see how you can do, do all of the various kinds of infinitives and make gerunds out of them. And this is something that we do use a lot in English, and here's the way you do it in Greek. We, you know, it's it's not the same as an infinitive. You've promoted the infinitive into a into a noun, as noun functions. All right.